Excuse me. Let's be honest here, folks. We've all thought about throwing a book through the wall at one point in our lives, at some point. Now, I've never personally thrown a book against the wall. I just keep the anger deep inside me. But today in this video, we will finally know the answer if we can physically throw a book through a wall. We've got quite the lineup of books here to test. So we've got two different hardbacks, some of the best books ever written. I figure the higher rated the book, the higher the chance it'll actually go through the wall. Um, We've got hardbacks, we've got softbacks, but I couldn't find brokebacks, so these are the ones we'll be testing. But since I'm not confident about my ability to throw a book through a wall, I'll be building a giant book slingshot that uses these elastic bands to throw a book at over a thousand miles per hour into the wall. So the idea behind the book catapult is that you got your book back here, it'll be on a little like cart or something, and then we'll take a bungee, strapped up here, stretch it tight, whoa, fly out and go through a wall. <laughs> Now first things first, I need to know how fast I can throw a book so I can compare it to the slingshot and see if the slingshot's actually gonna go any faster than I will. Okay, test number one, Terry Spear. Terry Spear, a personal favorite of mine. Each blue line on the wall is a foot apart, and if I did my math correctly, I just threw this book at 163 miles per hour. Of course, perspective plays a big role in this, and those blue lines are like four feet behind the book. So I'm gonna wager it's around 50 to 60 miles per hour for real. I do need to know the relative stretchiness of my band since my launch pad will be four feet long and my wingspan is about the length of my arms. So if I take a foot of this and stretch it, it doesn't quite go that far. So I'm thinking this test is useless and I'll just figure it out as we go. The first step to building the book slingshot is to build the launch platform where the cart will ride on, which will hold the book and will deliver the book to the hungry customer, otherwise known as the wall. So here's our book launching ramp. Next step is to build a little cart that actually sits on top of the launch platform and is what the bungee is connected to. So the book will just sit in it and then launch from the little cart. I'll use these little uh, ball bearings so it's a small amount of friction and hopefully it'll go really fast. I even sanded where the book sits to further reduce friction when the book launches. Come to pop, little guy. Uh-huh. That's it. Uh-huh. Come on. Come on. Hey. Hey. I wasn't planning on putting sides onto the launch pad, but uh, it does like to go one way. So hopefully if it's under tension on both sides by the bungees, it should go straight, but we'll see. So this is how the latching system works. So you don't have to hold the slingshot. You can uh, prep it, aim it where you want, and then shoot it. Um, all it is is a uh, latch for a fence gate. So you just back up to it, latched in, and then won't go anywhere until you pull the trigger. Yeah. Draw it back. Lock it into place. Aim it at your least favorite wall, and uh, here we go. Hey, that worked pretty well, actually. After that first test, it was pretty clear that it needs some sides and obviously a stop, so the cart would stop and the book would keep going. The thought is, the book's in here, slams into here. Whoa. Cart stops, book right through. Bring this back. We're locked in. <laughs> uh, that worked pretty well, kinda. There's about six feet between the end of this and the start of the table. So let's see if I can get enough elasticity to get the book to hit the table before it hits the ground. Instead of only having a single loop like this, I will be double looping it, and hopefully that should double the power. If I could figure out how to double loop it. All right, Terry, get in there. Whoa. Oh, I can't even. I guess we'll just launch it like this. Okay, that last launch kind of sucked for two reasons. One is it actually broke the stop on this side. It stripped it straight out, so I'm gonna have to rework that. And then uh, doubling the one band was obviously way too hard to get back. You can see now we've got four equal loops. Um, so we'll just double up on that. So hopefully that should still give us the stretch amount, but it'll be more power. I don't know, we'll see. All right, here's the new stop. I. Uh, Really didn't want it to go anywhere. <laughs> Some may call it overkill, but I, I call it necessary. The idea is instead of it hits the sides now, it just hits that bottom piece. There's a little bit of a lip still. All right, folks, here we go. Three, two, one. This is the second test for two bands. I found a much easier way to load it. Uh, first, you lock the dolly back there, and then you just load one band on at a time. 
just like that. It's so much easier and I'm stupid for not thinking about that earlier. But let's give this a go. I think I'm gonna shorten each individual band by a couple inches and then add a third band on after this uh, if this doesn't perform well. Three, two, one. <laughs> I've cut the band down a good amount, about a foot, um, and I've also added these black lines at every six inches. So with this test, we should be able to see how fast the cart is actually moving. Hello. Here's the speed test for a single shorter band on each side of the cart. We can see it takes roughly 10 frames for the cart to go one foot, but this was recorded using Samsung's slow-mo, which is 32 times slower. Yeah, editor here. Um, I just realized it's not 32 times, it's only 8 times. So I thought I had this bad boy going up to 100 miles per hour with uh, 3 bands eventually. It's only like 27 miles per hour. So uh, that's a bit disappointing considering that. So I went through this whole video and testing and all that thinking it was going way faster than it really was, which it's starting to make a lot of sense, but things still do get thrown at walls and walls do get destroyed. So, uh, carry on. Here we have a side-by-side -side comparison of one band versus two band on each side. You can see the two band is much faster. This is our first hardcover book launch. Um, we've got two bands at 24 inches. Let's see how this does. <laughs> Looks like even after all my fortifying, the stop is still coming off, so I'm gonna have to rework that. All right, if this breaks off now, I literally have no idea what to do. It's got more screws in it than an average house. They say that three is the magic number. I'm sure they were referencing the amount of bands you need for a proper slingshot. Um, you can see I've also added a little cap to the end here. You can see from the previous launches, when the cart hits the stop, it flies up in the air. So hopefully this little beam will stop it. Okay, three band launch in three, two, one. Maybe. And here's the speed test for two bands per each side versus three bands. Again, three bands much faster. I don't think I want to go more than three bands. Stop is barely even holding together because the amount of force that's colliding with it. So I think the next step is to put it on its legs and put it in my living room and shoot it at my wall. JK, LOL, I don't think the landlord would appreciate a book-shaped hole in the wall. Um, instead, I'll be making these standing walls to shoot at and cut a bunch of sheetrock panels and change them out when they get destroyed. So let's pack it all up. I'll be heading to the Library of Congress. I heard they have a lot of books there and it's free ammunition, so win-win. <laughs> Our first victim today comes from Karen Harbo, Fight Nyers. As a tribute to the best historical romance I've read in a long, long time, I will read an excerpt from it. She died from her son's neglect, he said softly. Truly deserving of the best historical romance I've ever read. Up next is my favorite culinary book. Let me read an excerpt from the back of the book. About three things I was absolutely positive. First, Edward was a vampire. Second, I had gonorrhea. This time I'll be doing the frisbee action to see if it's any better for wall penetration. First sling of the slingshot, we've got a Terry Spear. I don't think I need to read an excerpt from this book. Firing in three, two, one. Whoops, three, two, one. Whoops, three, two, one. Twilight in three, two, one. I think the problem with the books is that they open their mouth too much, can't keep it closed. That's a issue that a lot of people that I know have. So I'm gonna tape these closed so they don't open up during flight. Hopefully that should make more of a missile right into the wall. Broken, just like my hopes for this slingshot. Oh, I put a hole. Did you get that on there? Okay, it's possible to put a hole in drywall with a book, apparently. I'm gonna put the slingshot right up against the wall and directly fire into it, and hopefully we'll get something. 
Turns out you can throw a book through a wall if you try it enough times. Uh, don't worry, I brought some other ammunition and some more wall pieces. We'll try those out. Wait, when do we have to get these back to the library? Next up, we'll be using ammunition from nature herself and four, count them, four bands. Let's rock this mother. I think this thing kind of sucks. If rocks don't work, maybe the wheels from my coworker's chair will. Remind me to return these on Monday. Fly high, Michelle. For the final trick, I will be removing the stop completely and letting the cart launch directly into the wall. Two, one. Well, I think we've answered two questions here today. Yes, you can throw a book through the wall if you are persistent enough. And yes, the slingshot is not very good. Wasn't recording at all. Five.